Welcome builders. So today we're going to be talking about a NuGet package called Floral. This package makes it easier to consume REST APIs. We can always roll our own and use the built-in stuff like the HTTP client. But with Floral, it makes it a little bit more streamlined in the code, so it's easier to maintain. And then also it has built-in methods to do things like authorization and serializing that payload that's going to come back from that API. So today we're going to be doing a cool little project. We're going to be consuming an API called WeatherStack, where you can type in a city name and it will return the current weather for that city. And to call this API, we're going to be using Floral. So to start, let's look at the WeatherStack website and see how you guys can sign up for free and start using the API. So we're on the weatherstack.com website and it does have a paid model. But for this example, we can use the free, uh, the free version. That should be fine. So first thing you want to do is just sign up. Once you're signed up, you will be taken to this screen where you can get your API access key. This is going to be needed in order to consume the API. So when we hop over to Visual Studio, you'll see this is stored in the app config, and then it gets passed into the API when we go to fetch the data. One important thing to note while we're here is the documentation. So click over to the documentation and you'll be able to see they show you exactly what you need to do in order to make these, uh, in order to make these API calls. Uh, and they have a few methods available. For the first example we're going to look at, we're just looking at current weather. And we can see it is just a simple Git request. So we're calling api.weatherstack.com slash current. And then in the query string, that access key is our API key that we saw on the last screen. And then the query is whatever we want the user to type in for the search they want to look at. In this case, they're saying, give me the weather for New York. And the cool thing is, since this is a Git, we can actually do this in the browser to test it. So. Let's take a look. So in my browser, I went to api.weatherstack.com slash current, gave it my access key, and our query is New York. So you can see we're getting a JSON response for the weather in New York. Now, a tool I use online a lot is called JSON Pretty Print, and it makes it easier to read. So let's copy this, and then I'm going to go over to Pretty Print, and paste it in. So now that we can see our formatted response, uh, it's much easier to see what data it contains. So we've got a request, we've got the location, which is New York in the United States of America, it gives you the Latin long in case we needed to maybe plot this on a map, that data is there. The time zone, and then in the current section, here's our weather. We've got our temperature, uh, by default, this is going to be in Celsius. So if we look at the documentation, it shows that we can specify the unit to put, if you put unit equals F, you'll get uh, degrees in Fahrenheit. Okay? And then it gives you a weather icon in case you wanted to have some kind of a display of uh, the current weather. The description, it's partly cloudy. It's got the wind, humidity, all that good stuff. So now the next thing we're going to want to do is bring this into our application. But there's one more thing I want to show you, and it's a really powerful tool. So we're going to copy this, and then we're going to go over to a website called JSON, the number two, csharp.com. And what this does is it takes in a JSON payload and it generates classes for C sharp. And these classes will be used to store the object. So we can then deserialize uh, that payload that comes back from the API, and it'll put it into objects that we can work with on our application. So I'm going to paste in our response and hit convert. And you can see it generated these classes for us. So we have a class current with all of these, these properties. We've got a location, the request, and the root, which is the parent object containing the request, the location, and current. So this helps out a lot. When consuming APIs, 
This is the method I use all the time. I like to test out the API manually, and then whatever that response is, I use JSON to CSharp.com to get the classes I need. And by the way, these classes are called POCOs. So if you ever hear that in the wild, all that means is a plain old CLR object. Essentially, it's a class that stores data, but doesn't really have any kind of special methods or special functionality to it. It is strictly used to house data. Okay, so now that we've seen weatherstack.com, we've seen that we can call it, get data back, and then use that data to generate classes for our application. Now I wanna jump over to Visual Studio and take a look. First things first, hop over to github.com slash build sharper and download course 204. You're gonna to wanna to clone that repo on your local. If you're not sure how to clone a repo, go watch course zero, or we have a course specifically dedicated to Git, and we go into much greater detail on the intricacies of Git. So check that out, download the course 204 repo on your local, and let's take a look. Okay, so here we are in Visual Studio, and the first thing I like to do is just run the application so you can see what it does, and then we'll dig into the code and see how things work. So let's run it. I could see buildsharper.com weather. Enter your city. So let's type in Dallas. Fetching weather. Uh, it says Dallas, Texas, local weather. It's sunny, 77 degrees. And then we can just uh, hit any, any key to continue. So we do that. And that's it. So let's do one other test. So what if uh, the cat runs across the keyboard and types in a bunch of stuff. What, what happens? Invalid city name, please try again. So this time we'll do, let's say, New York. And we get back the local weather for New York, which is partly cloudy and 59 degrees. Pretty cool stuff. So let's take a look at our app. So we can see we're using system.configuration, that is to pull values out of the app config. We've got our models, which we'll take a look at here in a second. And we're using floral.http. And in order to get this, we had to add the floral NuGet package to our application. So, and that can be done through the NuGet package manager. So you just search floral and then add that to your app. Okay, so our base URL is being pulled from our web config as well as our API key. So if we go into the app.config, I can see we've got these two values, weather stack API key, and that's the same one we pulled from the website after we signed up. And then the base URL is just api.weatherstack.com, okay? back in our app. So I've got this done variable and I'm using it in a while loop. Because essentially I wanna keep asking them to enter the city until I get a valid response. That way, like I said, if the cat walks across the keyboard and types in a bunch of random stuff, it's not gonna give back a valid response. So we'll continue to ask the user until they get a valid response. Okay, so enter the city. We're gonna capture that in a variable called query. Now I'm preparing my app URL. It's going to be the base URL, which is coming out of the web config that api.weatherstack.com slash current. And then the access key, again, that's coming from our web config. The units is F, like we said, so that it returns in Fahrenheit. And then the query is whatever they type in whether it's like Dallas or New York, like our example, okay? So that's stored in app URL. Now, since this is an asynchronous call, meaning that we're calling back, meaning that we're calling out to this API and then awaiting a response, we wanna give the user some sort of feedback in the meantime, so it doesn't look like our application has locked up. So before we call the API, we're doing a console.writeline fetching weather. And that way the user knows something's going on. 
So we display that first, and then we're gonna do the var response equals await. The await keyword ensures that our application waits for this response. So we're calling out, we're making an asynchronous call out to this API, but our application won't execute the next line until it gets that response back. Because in this case, we wanna make sure we have a response so we can display it back to the user. The cool thing about async is that if you don't need that instant feedback back to the user, you can make the asynchronous call and move on. Your application will, will not have to wait for that to execute. It can make the call and then move on to other steps in your application. But in our case, now that we have a response, we want to ensure that it's got, uh, that current is populated as well as the location, uh, which means it was successful. So we can set done to true, and then we're going to print out whatever that actual weather forecast is. So we can see we're typing in the location name and region, which would be, for example, Dallas, Texas, local weather. We're printing out the weather description and the temperature degrees. Now, if this did not give back a valid response, that's when we're telling the user invalid city name, please try again. And we read the key, we clear the console, and then we go back up to display where we ask them to enter the city. So the advantage we're getting from Floral is actually right here, this API URL. All this is is a string, but Floral adds extension methods to a string, such as this method here, get JSON async, but we can also do much more. For example, we could do like dot with headers. So if we had certain headers that we needed to add to this request, that could be done here. Or like dot with basic auth. So if we needed to specify a username and password in order to make that request, we can do that here. Or there's dot with OAuth bearer token or with cookies. There's lots of things we can do inline to make an API call. This is much simpler than having to create like an HTTP client and do our call that way. And for this example, this is a get, but there's also methods for put, post, delete, all the methods we need in order to talk to a REST API. And you can see also in this get JSON async, it's templatized so we can specify the type of object we wanna get back. So we're saying, get JSON async, and the response, I want it to serialize as the weather stack response, which in our models folder, we have this weather stack CS. This is all the code that was generated by the JSON to csharp.com website, where we pasted in that JSON and it generated all of those POCO classes for us, okay? And in this case, I also, I tend to rename the root. So the root object it generated, I give more of a meaningful name. So I call that the weather stack response. So that object is what we're gonna be getting back from this get JSON async. So in this response, it is of type weather stack response, which is why we can pull the current location, all the weather stats, directly from that response. And that's pretty much it. I highly recommend Floral whenever talking to a REST API. It makes things a lot simpler to, to do in the first place, but then also maintain. Like I said, it adds those extension methods to a string so that you can specify your headers, your authorization, your payload, and then also specify how you want that response to be serialized. We also took a look at pretty print so that we can look at JSON in an easily readable format. And then also using JSON to C sharp to generate those POCO classes for our API responses. And now it's time for everybody's favorite segment, homework. So as always, the first step is to go download the repo. Go on to github.com slash build sharper, download course 204, clone it on your local, and open it up in Visual Studio. 
Now, by default, if you go into the app.config, it's not going to have a valid API key in there. So you need to go over to weatherstack.com, sign up for a free account, and then copy that API key into your app config. Then run it, make sure it works. Then for part two of your assignment, you're gonna make a new application to generate the seven day forecast for a given city. So all you have to do is go over to weatherstack.com, take a look at their documentation, and look at the seven day forecast. It's a little bit different query, and it's gonna be a different response. So you'll have to generate new POCO classes and change your query up a little bit. And by doing all of this, you're gonna get more and more familiar with the weatherstack.com API, pretty print, and the JSON to C sharp generator. Once you've got this new seven day forecast app built, get it checked into GitHub. Share it with us on Twitter. You can tag us at build sharper. We'll be sure to give you a retweet and we'll give you props. Uh, or if you're having trouble, you can reach out to us on Twitter as well. That's going to do it for now. We'll see you next time.